Hi, it's Jasmine. You know, that girl who did you know what way before the internet ever existed. Join me and my special guest every week as we talk about anything and everything because nothing is too taboo. So punch your ticket and get on board the crazy train with me, Jasmine St. Clair. All aboard! Welcome to a new episode of Crazy Train Podcast. I hope everyone's enjoying the episode so far. This week's guest, Capri Cabani, has quite a lot to say. Uh, it's a very open and candid conversation about sex and porn, of course, but we also have some similarities. So check it out. I'm so excited to have you, Capri. Capri, you are so pretty. I thought you were part Asian. What's your ethnic background? Uh, Italian and Scandinavian. Oh, okay. I can totally see that. <laughs> I actually just found that out recently. So my whole life, I was told, like, my father's from Italy. We all knew that. But my mom, it was kind of a little bit of a mystery because she comes from a real backwards family. And they're like, oh, you're Scottish and Ukrainian and Polish. And I was like, "Mm, I beg to differ. So I did that Ancestry DNA thing. And I actually just got my results back two days ago. And I was like, oh, well, look at that. Okay, yeah, the Italian side, yeah, that's there. But the rest of it is, like, Scandinavian that little area so which makes sense because my mom has 12 brothers and sisters and every single one has blonde hair blue eyes I'm like that's where they got it okay okay it's so true when I lived in Scandinavia it was kind of backwards anyway in very many (laughs) ways there's this dating app when you go to Iceland right and you put your name in and the name of the person you're on a date with and you see if you're related somehow. No shit. I wasn't related to anyone, like, thank God. Uh, <laughs> they're saying now that Ancestry is supposed to take like your personal data for these nefarious uses, which I don't know if that's true or not. What part of Canada are you from originally? And what even brought you to the States to do adult films? Okay, so I'm from Vancouver. Um, born and raised in like a little town like an hour outside of Vancouver and then just slowly progressed to move my way to downtown and um, okay hmm. so I was dating this guy who I met and on our first this is it's the wildest story like I don't even understand men sometimes I just don't get it but anyways I was so young right I was like 23 years old 24 24 when I met him our first date, he takes me to a nude beach, the only nude beach that we have in Vancouver. Now, mind you, I didn't lose my virginity until I was 18 years old. I had, me and the boyfriend were together for two years before we had sex. And I was a total prude. Um, very inexperienced, very, very curious, but scared to go out and try all these things. So anyways, I meet this guy. He takes me to a nude beach. I'm like, what the and then we go back to his house. He makes me lunch. I'm like, that's cool. His parents were there. Like, he made everybody lunch, all that jazz. Brings me into his office. And he's like, oh, let me show you. He starts showing me pictures of his ex-girlfriend. Okay. Now, I see, as an adult now, I'm like, wow, red flag, red flag, red flag. But as a younger woman, I didn't see the red flags. I didn't know what they were. And... It turned out she was an adult film performer and I got jealous and I was like, huh, huh, well, mm, I can do better. So I started, that's how I started modeling. I ended up doing lingerie and swimsuit modeling up in Vancouver and that all was going great. I still had my regular job. Everybody knows I used to be a veterinary technician. So I worked in an animal hospital. Um, And then I got a call from this photographer that shot for Playboy. And he was like, yo, do you want to shoot for me? And I was like, do I got to take my clothes off? He's like, well, yeah, it's Playboy. I was like, hmm. So I did it. And it was very liberating. Um, Also, at the same time, the guy that I was with, he was like, hey, let's do a threesome. And I was like, okay. And we did that. And I had like the time of my life. And 
we had booked, we had just, we had hired somebody to come over and she was beautiful. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. So then I was, I found um, like moving forward, I decided I wanted to explore my sexuality more, especially with females and me and that person, it ended up, we, it had to end. So, but he was really hard to leave because he, he had lots of money. He was very hot he had the sex was phenomenal but his problem was that he could not be monogamous and even still to this day he can't be monogamous and we're friends now like you know 20 years later we're good friends and now we both actually live in los angeles it's very strange we hang out at least once a month and but now he's like he's grown up and he's like yeah i i won't be with just one girl and so now he tells them in advance i'm like good job good job at least you're owning and being true to who you are right so anyways, I had to get away from him and because I couldn't get away from him. I, I just, I was not mentally strong enough to withhold myself. So I started looking and at the same time, I wanted to have sex with more girls and I wanted them to look a certain way. And so I started researching porn and agencies and it took me about eight months to actually, like I'd be sitting in the vet office on the computer looking up looking up agency Ooh, and harassment but okay <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah I found an agent I sent them my modeling portfolio that I had online and they bought my ticket and that was that and I came down and that was that like I spent a week here went back home with more money than I made in two months working in the animal hospital and then I got in my car and I drove here and I never looked back and that was in 2008 so it's been a long a long minute (laughs) that's an interesting story there's so many different pieces of meat so to speak well not literally to pull out of that Mm -hmm. first and foremost there's a term for guys who get girls into adults it's called a suitcase pimp but he didn't really get you into it okay but that is the term we've always referred to them as. It's okay, it's been, I don't know if you've had one yet or if you've been that long. Oh. You're very fortunate. In the 90s, it was a thing, trust me. Um, I had one, ugh. but getting back to your ex, this is a very interesting story because I think that's super cool you guys connected after all this time. And, and being, we're cool. Like it's, it's not a big deal because as long as you're hiring people outside of the relationship, and I used to do that with an ex of mine all the time. Yes. Because I thought it was great. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm not into girls. Um, so I think that's perfectly normal. What's your sign? And I'm not trying to hit on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Pisces. A Pisces. That makes sense. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. So now, now this is opening up a whole new like box of things for me, uh, so to speak. So then you come here, weren't you like a little bit afraid of like what was going to happen once you got here? Because it's a, at that yeah. time, the business had changed very much. I was afraid mostly of penis size. Um, oh, that was, track of being too small or big? Big, being okay. too big, because I was so inexperienced with sex. Um, I had only had five partners prior to getting in the industry and I got in at 26 so I yeah I was I was definitely nervous I remember my first scene for Vivid's Fresh New Faces and Marco Banderas comes walking out and I was like what oh my god how is this gonna work and but it, it went fine like it was fine but yeah it was nervous I, I mean I was nervous I was very nervous and that week that I was here, I shot so many scenes um, that I went home and I was like, okay, can you do this? But then the pocket, the bank account said, yes, ma'am, you can. Yes, ma'am, you can. And I wanted to leave Vancouver. I was never happy there, honestly, because of the rain. I'm, my personality is weather dependent. Uh, I need to be able to be outside. I always said, like, I want to live somewhere where I can be in shorts and a tank top most of the year and I had actually looked into moving to multiple places I tried to get sponsored um, by a veterinary clinic in Australia but then I ran into an issue with like I couldn't bring my dog there without quarantining her I had this dog for 12 years she was my soulmate 
and she came to and from Canada with me. This dog came at me, big pit bull. Um, yeah, so I just, I wanted to live here. And then when I went back home, I was like, okay, no, I think I'm going to move there. And so I gave my notice to the hospital, but I was also the manager of two practices and the head technician. So I gave them like two months. I had to hire people to replace me. And then I got back in my car and I drove here with my dog and, and that was, yeah, that was that, but it was, it was, it was scary, but it was exciting. And it allowed me getting in the industry, allowed me to really dissect my sexuality and what makes me tick what I like in a controlled and safe environment. And that's the key right there. So, Mm -hmm. you know, women will have, whether they want to admit it or not, some women have these fantasies of being with multiple people or doing wild, crazy things or having wild, crazy things done to them. But in my personal life, I was never going to have that happen. I would never trust anybody. I never, I was always very, I proceeded with caution all the time. So coming into porn enabled me to fulfill those fantasies in a controlled and safe environment where we're all tested. There's multiple people present. I can stop if I need to. I'm not, you know, like, yeah. It's a different time now. And that'll bring me back to one question about the testing. Um, And I I like to compare notes sometimes with people, especially people such as yourself, who are very um, well-spoken and understand the both sides of the business. Now, back in the era when I was doing this, we had tests every single month, right? Mm -hmm. And if someone did not have a current test, of course, I wouldn't work with them. I was a total bitch. I still am. But I just think like nowadays, I hear that there's always some kind of a drama or always some kind of an outbreak crisis with creators because creators are not performers, so to speak. Do you think that like you see that whole difference where they don't get it and people have to somehow school some of them? Um, I don't really know because I don't know any just strictly creators. Like I only know kind of the OG film people so you know we were back in the day we tested once a month if you didn't have a clean test you couldn't show you don't even show up a set like that's just the way it is now we test every two weeks for much many more things which is so intrusive now like oh my god going to get tested is like oh jesus like really but okay i get it um i do feel like if they maybe if everyone stopped shooting for three weeks then they could get a hold of this whole gonorrhea chlamydia situation that's been going what? on. Whoa, 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 what? So, well, apparently within the past couple of months, there was like some, like the strain of chlamydia <sighs> that just continually was getting passed around because so chlamydia is an STI that can stay in your system for two to three weeks without showing up on a test. So let's say, let's say I test two days ago and I get a clean test or okay a week ago I slept with someone who had chlamydia and then I test two days ago and my test comes up clean well I'm actually infected and I go and I shoot with five people next week and then my next test also comes back negative because it's still not showing up in my system so then I've now I've infected a multiple of people right and they don't know for two to three weeks until symptoms occur typically um and then having it in your throat that had that, had, that happens you I had gonorrhea in my throat once and I had no idea and the only reason I found out is because I worked with one of my friends and she was like yo I got gonorrhea and I was like well I didn't give it to you and I I had my test done my urine test and I was like it's negative she's like go get your throat swabbed and I'm like okay so I did and it came back positive and I was like oh <laughs> Oh my God. I'm like, yeah. so I, and I'm not a virgin to these things, obviously. I'm just so mortified because we never had this back then. I wasn't working as much. I'd work like once a month. And I don't know if you have contract stars now, but unfortunately Rob Black had the the, um, the honor of paying $300 every time someone came to his office to do my blood because I'm afraid of needles. So I'd be sitting there, I'd have a butterfly needle, I'd be squirming around, like all jumping, like, can you just sit still? This would have been done like 40 minutes ago, but you keep jumping around. So it was just this horrendous thing for me. Now, I don't know if these things are happening 
because it's a different temperature making money in adult right than what it was back then yes. is it probably what they're doing in their personal personal life or uh, I mean unproductive of course or could it possibly be this whole temperature where some people have to do extra work which is fine I have no problem with that and customers right. are now paying for like unprotected sex with these girls. And I see it all the time, you know? That is, that is something that I have had a major issue with, with girls for, you know, like I quit performing for nine years, but even prior to that, if I heard that a girl would do that, she was put on my uh-uh list because she's putting herself at risk and that's not okay. And it also, it sets a precedent with the customers that they can have that with anybody for a price and that's not okay because safety comes first our health comes first now first and foremost it should be our health but i guess to some people money talks i now i really i i don't know i feel like so many people they're shooting all the time they're shooting content all the time some of these guys that you know used to work let's say three days a week now they're working seven days a week because they're shooting content so sorry this neighbor behind me this old couple i can't even content. hear them okay. <laughs> um so maybe it's just that I'm mean, honestly I really don't know I really don't know I'm I'm selective about who I work with and typically like to only work with the OGs um obviously that's not really in my power for some companies when they pair me with you know people that I don't know but I'm just gonna hope for the best and yeah do my due diligence for all that I can do. And, you know, as far as myself and my personal life, um, like I don't have sex with random people if I'm shooting porn. Number one, because I'm going to keep that person safe. Number two, I don't know who that person's sleeping with. So I'm going to keep my comrade, my peers in my work group safe. And, but I, a lot of people don't follow those same guidelines. So. Yeah, it's crazy. I just, a guy that I wrestle with, he called me the other day. He's like a little brother. And he was saying all this stuff. He had sex with some girl who gets fucked behind dumpsters in Philadelphia by guys. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You just like said five things right there or three things that just really like have just spun my head. Uh -huh. I said, go get tested. He came back. Oh yeah, I'm positive for all this shit. I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. I said, you're really awesome. You're like super cool. I said, go get, go take care of your shit and just don't ever talk to her again. Cause she knows what she's doing. I mean, she's slimy. Now you said something interesting earlier. Mm -hmm. You decided to get into adult or explore it when you saw photos or videos of girls from a diet. So here's a piece of unknown Jasmine facts. Mm -hmm. When I was, I was working in a record store. Yeah. 19 or 20, 20. The guy I was dating was going into strip clubs and I got jealous, not really jealous, but really curious. Mm -hmm. So I guess where I started working, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started moonlighting when I was in college. I went to the slimiest place in Times Square as the very first place I worked at. It, it happens. It's like, it when does. It's planting the seed, right? Somebody plants the seed and then whether we water it or not, and then it grows or we don't water it and it doesn't grow. So yeah, it depends on, it, it depends on us. I also grew up with a camera in my face all the time. So my oh. mom, yes, every year I had photo shoots every single year up until um, my teeth went all messed up. So I always had very big teeth and they, I had, I had like an inch overbite. It was really bad. So I had ton, like five years of orthodontic work, but up until my teeth got bad every single year, this woman had me in a studio and doing these photo shoots. Um, so it was always something that I, I've always been comfortable in front of a camera and yeah, cause she always had it in my face. Like, even when I didn't want to go, she be dragging me out the door, get me all dressed and, you know, little breaths in my hair and she never put makeup on me or anything. But, um, but my mom also did photography as well, just as a hobby. And I'm the spitting image of her. It's ridiculous. When I look back at pictures, I'm like, oh my God, like this at Christmas, I was looking through her photo album. I'm like, wait, is that me? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's not me that and I'm like that's my mom holy shit <laughs> it's scary like I look just like my mom with um with much lighter skin but everything is like my but I think my dad kind of looked like my mom a little bit I mean they weren't related they're from two separate ends of the like 
world. But yeah. it's just the weirdest thing when you have parents that have some similarities. It's really weird. Uh-huh. So did you have glamour shots every year from the mall? Did you go to do glamour shots with like the jacket and the teased hair and everything? Oh, this was a, pr- a private photographer. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, not, oh, no, yeah, not even in the mall. Not even, but I remember like going to the Bay or going to Sears and stuff. Like we did those too, but no, he had full studio props from when I was six months old. Like, so she has some amazing photos of me, which are, are lovely to have because who doesn't, you know, now as an adult, I get to look back on them and some of them are blown up like huge. And I'm like one year old or two years old and uh, no full studio. She had this one person and then he would take the pictures of me and sell them as stock photos. Did you sign okay. anything? Back in the day, probably. No, she didn't sign anything because she saw the photo. at. So we have this thing in Vancouver called Playland, which is similar to like um, Six Flags. Yeah. And once a year, they have this expo thing there called uh, the Peony. And she went there and she saw a blown up photo of me at the Peony. He was showcasing all of his work. And, and she was like, but that's my daughter. He was like, yeah, doesn't she look so cute? And that, And this was back in the 80s. So you know it was a little bit harmless then I'm sorry I get I'm just I get wrapped up with all this stuff with kids and you know grooming and I just get really like my head goes into it like so deep it's I get I do go over the top overboard but everything I've said since day one is true I'm watching this series now called when murder turns to miss when missing turns to murder yeah and it just pissed me off so bad because in England where I lived for a while they they hire bus like bus drivers um and people in the neighborhood they don't register sex offenders they don't run background checks on these people driving buses who end up kidnapping kids sexually assaulting them and then murdering them it just like it took my head for a spin last night I got really obsessed on it and went down that whole rabbit hole (laughs) I know not do a background check on someone working with kids though that just they don't do it for drag queen story hour why are they going to do it for that So it's just this whole thing that has me going from like five in the morning to like two in the morning, till two two in the morning the next day. So I just go and do this whole thing. It's crazy. It's a sickening world sometimes, but coming here and doing adult, I'm sure, you know, it was somewhat of a culture shock, especially, I don't know who Marco Banderas was, but is, but I do know my first scene with Peter North. I had no clue who Peter North was. I thought he was Randy Spears because they mixed up the, the, the titles, people's names. And yeah. I thought it was Randy Spears. I had no clue. Then I see this dark haired guy with this thing. I'm like, holy shit. Uh-huh. I'm going to go running to the hills now, but I didn't. Isn't he Canadian too? Yes, he is. That's the other thing from <laughs> Easter Island. Have you ever, what is Easter Island? Like, is that a thing? Do people live there? Are there Easter bunnies? Like, what is it? Easter Island? Yes. Easter. That must be an East Coast thing because I have no idea that's why it's easter it's easter island yeah maybe yeah maybe who knows maybe it's up near like prince edward island which is like the middle. yes that's so me yeah okay. yeah i would never live there <laughs> you can pay me to live there like no 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 it's just it's cold mm-hmm. and it's gross and it's cold and it's and so you cold. sound just like terry gar one of my favorite actresses you really do if you ever watch the movie Tootsie, you'll see the voice similarities, which is a compliment, by the way. <laughs> now, what's your ultimate dream life? The ultimate dream life, even if you got 70% of that, and I'm sure you're living most of it now, but what is the end goal for Capri? The end goal, it's very sensitive to my heart. My end goal is I just want, I want a lot of land and I want to have a rescue, um, animal rescue. That's all I want is I want to help. I know, you know, some of us are born not knowing what our passion is, not knowing what our our drive is or what motivates us, what makes us tick. But I knew right from a little girl that animals, working with animals is what I am meant to do. And um, oh, see, I even get all emotional when I think about my future goals because they're so big and they're so scary, but that's why I go for them. Because if your goals aren't big and they don't scare the shit out of you, then your goals aren't big enough. So yeah, I want to, like, I just bought my first house and next is I'm going to try to look at some land, maybe not too far away, but it can't be in California because prices here are just insane. 
but um, I want land. I want maybe like five acres or something. And I, I just want to figure out a way to help and use my money to help the animals and get them fixed and get the medical care. And I just want to help. That's my ultimate is to be on a farm in the middle of nowhere with no people and a whole bunch of animals. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie, The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock? No. So there's this actress named Tippi Hedren who's in the movie. She lives all the way in Acton, uh, California with some sort of bird sanctuary. And I've always noticed this with adult stars and people involved in this business. We always get involved in things that are helpful towards others, um, whether it's health, whether it's animals. I love animals. My baby is a rescue. Nice. And I love him to death. I couldn't, like you go into Petco and you see these animals there. And then there's this little bitch walking around with a bird. I'm like, why are you walking around with a bird by the cats? Like, that's so stupid. Like, who are you? So it's so nasty. But anyway, I took him. I, I couldn't let him stay there. I'm like, there's no way. And you see so many of these animals. They don't they never run a background check on who they're giving those animals to. You know, and it's such, I'd much rather have them somewhere big like a farm and just have them there being taken care of properly than going somewhere. And you don't know, like, I'm glad I, I feel bad that he got adopted alone, but someone took his brother. So okay. they adopted a brother without him. So I'm like, all right, fine. He has a loving home and that's all that matters. And he's spoiled. Yeah. But years ago, there was a very beautiful uh, penthouse pet who passed away who had pet for pets. It was a foundation. Mm. And she had a big like piece of land in Florida, which is a great place for animals, by the way. Mm -hmm. And she raised animals there and she had a foundation. It's like a big rescue. So it's it's interesting how beautiful girls always want to like have these things far away from everyone. I don't know what the psyche is behind that. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know either. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Psychology. I just haven't used it yet. <laughs> Not on myself, at least. One of these days. Um, <laughs> oh, so what's a day in the life like for you with shooting and how often, like what do you have coming up? So typically... Well, I mean, I had just returned to mainstream. Um, what was it? The end of April or the beginning of May? No, it was in May. Or was it the beginning of, no, it was the middle of May. I think it's only been like a month. So I've only shot one, two, three, four, five, five, six. Say I've only shot six scenes. Um, it's good for me. It's the same as it was before. The only difference when I shot for browsers recently was now there's a talent liaison that is supposed to be there to help speak for the girls who don't know how to use their voices or don't feel comfortable. Um, see, I was never one of those girls. I'd never had any issues on set with anyone ever, but I carry myself a different way. So I do but then however i do know one badass og chick who carries herself the exact same way and someone tried to do something to her and she was like mm, 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 and she blew that shit up all over everywhere and i was like yeah you go girl because no but yeah um it's I, it, honestly it's pretty much the same some people are like oh the industry is so different now but for the companies i shot for i'm shooting with people that i know directors that have known me for a very long time easy it's easy and it's been nice it's been nice when I show up and I see the directors and I haven't seen them in 10 years and it's nice and like the lighting crews the grip guys the sound guys like a lot of them are the same people so it's nice and then they're like holy fuck where did you go and what is new and then when I give them kind of the spiel and they're like holy shit okay and now you're back I'm like yeah now I'm back and you know, there is this side of me that I tried to put a lid on it for a few years and the side of me exists. So i um, trying to completely squash that character didn't work out <laughs> at all. Not at all. It always comes back somehow, especially with creatives, you know, and when I quit the adult and I was doing wrestling, like I always stayed in entertainment and it was like the mafia, it just kept sucking me back in and I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave. Then you try to do something normal and people know you there. It's like, like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm like, let me just go figure out what 
like what next like how do you monetize like how do you parlay everything into money like yeah. one thing is I am um this is kind of a bad way to say it I am a whore do not fuck with my money or I will slice you so I always and I want that money that my, oh there's a penny there I'm taking that money I was selling photos to underage kids that were like 15 and 16 years old coming up to me at a metal festival as long as their little hands could reach over the table with yeah. the money I'm like just give me that <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> well, you can't, you know, yeah, it's hustle and it's, it's a different you temperature. Can, yeah, yeah, you got OnlyFans now too. Do you do yeah. OnlyFans too? And do you feel like it's profitable? Yeah, I do. Yes, I, I. So I started my OnlyFans three years ago, and it took me a minute. I mean, it took me six months before I would even take my bottoms off because I had removed myself so deeply like I, I literally killed my character I deleted myself I fell off the face of the planet but that wasn't my decision to do so, mm -hmm. so I know you can tell I'm sure yeah I didn't make that choice it was forced on me and that was that so when I started the OnlyFans I was I was like oh my god what am I doing am I really ready to do this again and it took me a minute to get comfortable um and yeah, a lot of my long-term fans, people that had been around back then, they found me again and, and it is very lucrative. Um, yeah, I run my own page. I, so it, it's a lot because I run that. And then I run my regular life company and my whole plethora of animals inside this house and everything else that's going on, but it is definitely lucrative. It's a lot of work. Um, so I shoot normally like I work my regular company and I'm open with fans and people that I'm like I have a normal life but I just don't I don't ever tell anybody what it is and everyone seems pretty okay with that they've, they've been very respectful so I do my normal life four days a week one day a week I shoot for my only fans whether it's customs or I create all my own all I do all my own content like I have all my own equipment and then I'll do content trade with girls. Um, so that's always fun. And then we'll hire photographers and videographers and all that. And those are fun days. I really like doing, uh, I really like doing those because I get to be creative and that's the artistic side that comes out of me. I'm very artsy fartsy crafty, like I like building stuff and painting stuff. And um, so when I get to do set design or even just like, I'll go scope out a location for a photo. I love doing outdoor photo shoots. It's one of my favorite things to do because it connects me with the earth. And I've had the same photographer since 2008. He's the only one that I actually hired to take on these adventures. And I have taken this guy all over the place. And he's like, just don't get me arrested. What he's like, um, listen, I'm black. Don't get me arrested. We're in Palmdale. Like, I'm like okay I got you I got you but we found like just so many cool spots we'll just we'll get in my truck I got a four by four and we'll just rip it through the mountains where I'm probably not supposed to be driving but it's okay because I find the best places ever that I love doing love it love it love it so we shoot like every three months together and then I shoot a whole bunch of stuff with him so I have enough pictures just mostly for like Instagram stuff because the stuff I shoot with him it's outside I'm not trying to get in trouble with the law so do I take my clothes off no am I dressed scandalous yes um yeah and then I shoot I pay male talent for scenes for my only fans because I don't trade my boy girl scenes that's not in my bet it's not in my financial best interest to do that um, I keep that exclusive to myself. So I do that like every couple months, kind of pop out a new one. I actually got the ex that I was talking <laughs> the ex that I was talking about. I got him to shoot with me because he yeah, yeah, yeah. He was really like, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, that's what these meetings are once a month. So awesome. well, it's only happened one time. He wants to do it again, but the first so he he had asked me a couple months ago. He was like, or no, no, no. I think I said it. I was like, you know, if you ever want to be male talent, like, it's, let me know. And he's like, oh, me. And then he actually was like, I'll do it. And I was like, okay, well, listen, we haven't slept together since the last time I went to Canada, which was in 2012, which we just randomly, whatever, you know, I, like I said, I couldn't stay away from this guy. So you put me back in Vancouver. I'm right back in his lap. And, um, yeah, I was like, all right, we're going to start with just something light. We're going to start with a blowjob. 
And then we'll work our way down from there on, on a later date. And so we did, and it was good. But then I realized that was not his first rodeo. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. He has done this multiple times. I could tell by his, when I was editing it and I'm looking like at his panning and I was like, huh, huh, okay, okay. I mean, you, he could pop on command. He, <laughs> that's so funny. Wait, are you paying him? no okay so thank god i'm like wait a second don't tell me you're paying this guy to have sex with you and like he's my ex. For the content. all right no yeah way i'm paying him he put me <laughs> too much mental turmoil that is, <laughs> no no the abundance of of crap he put me through back when we were in our 20s but now we laugh yeah. about it he's like oh yeah he's persian so he's got a really strong accent and he's like, oh, you know, I used to have a different girl every day. I'm like, yeah, every time I found a condom wrapper, I'd go in your closet and take a thousand dollars out of your box of cash. And that's how it, it was. He's like, you were just stealing money. I was like, I wasn't stealing it. I was taking it because yeah. you were out there doing you. I was going to go do me. How do you think I went shopping all the time, dude? What? That's how these things work. You know, where'd you get that handbag? Where do you think? Exactly. Seriously. Where were you last night? Yeah. So I went out and bought myself something. That's, <laughs> That's, Lady Vuitton. <laughs> That's so insane. I mean, I, yeah, I guess uh, there are a it's, lot of um. That's an interesting, it's, it's a good concept, but now it explains like why I see the wives, like the bitter wives, you hear them at the table next to you, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, yeah. well, he's doing this. Well, he's doing that. Then you see them with the credit card at the end. It's the Amex, like I went out with my friends. Uh, it was an ex of mine. It was his friend's wife. And these two guys, one was super scummy. Her husband, my ex wasn't as he was, he was like maybe 20%, not 50 or 30, but yeah. And then at the end of the lunch, it's like, who's paying for the lunch? We both had the platinum Amex cards. And I think we split it. And then we had each other's cards by accident. It was so funny. And you're like, what? I'll just spend? Yeah, we know. We're just spending. And then finally the alert came in. Wait, we why were you at Chateau Marmont? I wasn't at Chateau Marmont. And it just got <laughs> to this whole thing. It was so funny at the end of the day. But that, that's what they do. And you wonder like why you have the rich wives that are so miserable, but they just stay there because it's convenient. You know? Yeah. You take a thousand dollars out of the box for whatever. So you're shooting with him. You're shooting with other male talent. Is there someone you haven't worked with yet that you want to work with? Mm -hmm. um yes actually there's one person and it's because i've been hearing all these fabulous i've been hearing things about this guy named will pounder which never met him but i got told by one girl who she was just like swooning over him which i don't swoon over, i mean it, it's 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 work this is work I'm right? looking at this photo. yeah okay so apparently and then a director um this will pounder person's name got brought up and the director was like oh yeah all the girls are you know falling in love with him and i was like why and he's like well because he is super smart he's ex-military or navy seal but apparently he he's very 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 smart healthy conscious well-spoken all you know he fits all these categories and apparently he's a very good performer so as i'm told so i was like okay so there's one person that I actually hit up Naughty America and I was like, yo, y'all want to book me with so-and-so? And they're like, maybe we'll see, like, give us some time. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I know I just shot for you guys, so it's fine. But uh, besides him, no, I mean, I've worked with pretty much most of the, of the big name, all the guys I was interested in. I do feel like, and I might get some flack for this later, but I do feel like the guys back in the day were better. Yeah. Yeah. They looked like men too. <clears throat> you didn't have like the bitch buns going on. I call them bitch buns. I'm sorry. I just. Okay. I get it. I you get know, it. It's like, like, you have your bitch bun, you have a shit ton of tattoos, but you do not know how to change a tire. Wow. <clears throat> I could change a tire. Right? Even, yeah, I could change a tire. I can do an oil change. I mean, shit, yeah. I can do work. I can do a whole bunch of things. I rust the chain on my motorcycles myself. I de-rust them. I oil it myself. I lube it myself. So if I can do these things, 
Right. Why can't man bun boy with like the sleeve of tattoos do it? It's just this thing. But yes, back in the day, the guys there were a lot different. They were um they they were manly. They were like I remember Marco Rivera. I really liked him a lot. I think that was his name. And who else? Like Marco Banderas, he was always solid talent and you know, big man. Nick Manning, you remember Nick Manning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he married a friend of mine or dated her or something. Yeah. Man, he was he was always a good time. He was always a good time. Like a he good time person. He yeah, he he was he was a lot of fun. Like we would hang out, go to parties and he was wild. Um he was wild and yeah, but I miss but he was good and he was like man, you know? Like man man I really like Manuel Ferrara and I know he's still performing I was trying to hire him but he wants to just do content trade and I'm, I'm like just let me hire you because you know that's what I do or we can get, I'm hoping that a company will book me with him so then we both get paid and the company can have the scene um gotta really think there's one guy oh there's actually one guy that i want to work with but i don't know his full name all i know is that his first name is maximo maximo and i'm sorry i keep looking i'm just looking up these characters uh to see who they are super built he's hot totally my my cup of tea 100 percent. yeah here we go i see i think i see and he's Um, rough and he's like, and that's another thing. So, you know, when I first started, I was really vanilla in the industry. And as I've progressed and gotten older, and maybe it's that like, you know, what's that word when guys jerk off too much and then like they're taller, <laughs> you know, like the tolerance gets too high. Like you need more and more and more. The guy, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, um, I don't know. But now, you know, my from exploring my sexuality, I like things a little bit different than before. Like I'm not as vanilla anymore. And um, he's a pretty hardcore performer. So I would love to work with him because I think it would be fire, absolute fire. Same with, I really want to shoot with Manuel again because he's great. He's just great. Would, would you date someone in the business? Uh, yeah, I would date someone in the business. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would have no problems dating someone in the industry. Um, It doesn't, you know, I can distinguish the difference between sex and uh, emotional sex. Like there's two different types of sex. And yeah, I mean, I have no issues with it whatsoever. And as long as everything is fully transparent and open and honest, and there's no bullshit, so no emotional cheating that is a big no-no um you know you want to just sleep with other people go ahead go ahead it's just pussy at the end of the day as long as you're coming home to me and and you give me that choice like to be okay with it or walk away from it that's what my first boyfriend that guy I was like had you have just told me what you needed I probably would have been okay with it because I am very open-minded and I can go with the flow of a lot of things. If they don't hurt my soul, then okay. If it doesn't affect me, I don't care. And I want someone to be true to themselves. So, and be honest, because that's like the key for me is being true to yourself and speaking your truth and being who you are and not trying to be, you know, like, yeah, I'm talking to this guy right now. And I was like, you need to make sure that you're true to who you are because this is who I am and I'm not changing. Like I I did that ride once where I stopped everything for someone and it blew up in my face. That's never happening again. So, mm-mm. and he's like- you throw out all your stock, like all your photos and magazines that you were selling. They make you throw like everything out. I had to hide them at my friend's house for four years. They were in a box. So most of my um, like penthouse had sent me like 200 of the magazines that I was on the cover of. And most of them got ruined by water damage because it. I still, I have some of them now that I do, I still sell them. But yeah, no, he made me sell 
Um, so not this necklace, my norm, the necklace that I would wear in every single scene. He made me sell it. He made me sell like all my shit, get rid of all of it. And I wasn't allowed to have my friends over. I wasn't allowed to have my friends because he called them trash, worthless. However, this person met me as Capri. And this, this is the fucking kicker right here is that he was living in a renting a room in a porn star's house. That's how I met him. And you knew who I was and I, we became friends and I told him everything. I told him I did a gangbang. Yeah. I, yeah. You want to Google my name? You're going to see some shit. So, you know, it's like, if someone tells you that they're an art dealer, you're going to go and Google them and find out what kind of art they're dealing. You're going to go and well, do your due diligence and then walk away or stay, right? Pick. Well, by the time he proposed he, well he proposed and then and then he went and watched it when it was too late to walk away from me and everything went to shit and I was like but you knew like you knew though that it would be one thing if I had lied to you but I didn't lie to you and don't mind the dogs that randomly make appearances everywhere um I lost my train of thought because I was looking at you lied to me. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't lie to you. You knew who I was because you met me as Capri. You met me at my at the front yes. house. Yeah. But he still decided to judge me and throw me under the bus and you know say I'm XYZ and everything and anything and everything he could, which destroyed me. It it definitely destroyed me. And because I thought that he was my happily ever after. And yeah. I was so madly in love. And now that I've had time to heal. I've learned about narcissism and sociopaths and love bombing. And I'm like, holy shit, what happened? And yeah, to my face, he would call me a whore and worthless, but behind my back, he was flaunting that I was on the cover of Penthouse Magazine and driving a CLK 550. So, mm -hmm. That's your suitcase, Pim. So you kind of <laughs> had one. Did you pay for the CLK 550? Oh yeah, yeah, that I had that before I even met him. Oh, okay, never mind then. Then it's not your how, yeah, this was the guy that I got married to. Yeah, we've all uh, had that type of issue, trust me. I mean, it's it, yeah, it happens. And so now with this guy that I'm talking to, I was very very transparent uh, right up front. I'm like, this is who I am. If you got beef with it, you let me know. Because if you want to be in my daytime life, you gotta be cool and be involved in my life. Otherwise, you can come over after 9 p.m. and we can have an just a I mean, we could just have that's fine we could do that we could just have sex yeah because he's super hot and totally my type and he's he's great pulled some like 50 shades of gray on me shit the other night had that came out of the blue and he's scottish so i'm a sucker for a scottish or <laughs> scottish the scottish the accent. accent the scottish yeah. accent you know yeah it's a nice accent it's it's a very different one indeed um Yes. That's, uh, well, I, I hope it works out. I'm sure everyone hopes it works out for you because that's, that's the happily ever after usually right there. Um, yeah, when you can, when, when you, but again, when you're fully transparent and honest, like I was with the last one and then it just. It's not always like that because, you know, you're also dealing with people, you don't know how close they are to their family. You know, I had to deal yes. with this guy's like mother in freaking some, in fucking Sohomish, Washington. Oh, well, he's my only son. Like, you know what? Go back to your basement and bake your fucking blueberry bites. You, you, you Snohomish housewife. Remember, like, what was it? Violet Beauregard in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Uh -huh, uh -huh. With Johnny Depp. That's what she looked like. Oh, my dear. But, like, she'd been through some shit and run over by a bus. But the same haircut. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, my beautiful adjectives and descriptions of people sometimes. But you know, you you'll find the happily ever after. It seems like you're almost there. You have everything else in front of you with your career and then your your animals, Mrs. Yeah. Doctor Doolittle. Uh Capri, Capri Doolittle is what I'll call you. Um, <laughs> and if fans want to find you, where do they go online? OnlyFans. Well, OnlyFans, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit. Got it all. Yes. It's I a lot. That, thing, that Reddit, yes. Yeah. TikTok, I, I really, I enjoy TikTok a lot, actually. It's probably my, my favorite platform to be on because it's just, it's like my daily dose of whatever the, what is it? Is it serotonin or dopamine that makes you happy? It's um dopamine. 
dopamine okay so it's like my daily dose of dopamine because my feed is all animal stuff and i love it and i have yeah and i like making the tiktoks too i mean yeah i've gotten kicked off a few times but it's okay i'll just come right back and that's all right i started my dogs their own channel this morning or yesterday so <laughs> i gotta get one for my cat i haven't done that yet my stuffed yes. toy cat has a twitter though um it's I know I do like the voices and stuff with her don't ask me how this happened I picked her up at an airport and she's been with me for like 21 years that's so a long it's a stuffed animal yeah I mean her name is Sock St. Clair um oh. yeah so I put I post photos of her some people think I'm a little bit off when I do the voice because I think it's cute it is but, cute yeah okay good thanks so I'll just do more of that more of my little ventriloquism things uh, do you have any films coming out that people can look for uh coming up is going to be well the, my browser's one so we'll see when that comes yeah. out yeah that that was lots of fun and i shot two girl 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 scenes one is for a company called <clears throat> which is interesting so they named themselves let's do it like do a deer a female deer Ray, a drop of golden sun, you know, don't, uh -huh. and like, why, but okay, I mean, not trying to dog, it's just very strange, very strange, um, so there's that, but apparently that doesn't come out for like six months, they like stack up their content, and I don't know, and the other one, I think it was for Sweetheart Films, but again, I don't know, because I just hit up the director. I was like, hey, I'm back. He's like, no shit. All right, let's get you in. I was like, okay. He's like, girl, girl, girl. I'm like, okay. And I just showed up and that was it. And I didn't ask any questions. So that was from Mike Quasar. He's the director. He's one of Oh, my I know Mike. Dude, he is so awesome. Like, you speak to him still? Yes. And he's also Canadian. And oh, yeah, yeah. I was a total jerk to him. Tell him I said hi, though. He was doing camera back in the day at, at Metro. Okay. Um, I don't know if I was how much of an asshole I was on a scale of one to ten to him. I think it was like a five or a seven. Like okay. he that. won't care. He won't care. Okay, good. <laughs> He's not such thick skin. He doesn't give a shit. He's <laughs> probably one of the coolest people. Like yeah. So easy. So I mean, and his shoot days are so fast because he's like boom, 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 boom. Let's knock it out of the park. I mean, yeah, he's awesome. That's Mer is Mercury. You want to say hi, Mercury? his dark little self he kind of blends into the headboard a lot and the other one is chewing on a bone but there's this documentary of a couple that had this small guest house like this shack type guest house and they turned it into like a whole big cat playroom and they went in there they take photos every day and those are the cats that you see on these postcards and on these greeting cards it's this whole documentary about what you do with weird living spaces so oh. One of these days I want to get a tiny house in the middle of nowhere, maybe somewhere in Scandinavia or like Southern Italy somewhere, just far the fuck away. Not with all the cats, just a few, but have that tiny home. Cause like no one could find you at those. It's just like off the grid and they're just really cool. And you're in a whole other world. You could just write your own storybooks there. You could just, uh, it'd be sort of like Mary Poppins. You jump into the painting and you're just there. So that's right? what, one, no. of these days, one of these days, Literally everything is possible. Exactly. It is. It is, it is, it is, yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm supposed to be shooting some VR scenes. Um, I've never done those. Yeah. Well, that's kind of not true. Okay, so way back in the day, there was a company called Juicy something or other. I don't even remember the name, but all I know is that it was a bunch of university kids who somehow came into a bunch of money, I'm assuming from their parents, and they decided that they wanted, I think it was called Juicy Entertainment, and they wanted to make um a virtual reality film so they it wasn't it was interesting it was interesting but then I don't think they ever finished it because I think they ran out of money but that was like the first one way back in the day and then a couple of years ago actually Naughty America hit me up and they're like will you do this um hologram thing for us and I was like yeah but I won't get naked and they're like that's fine you can just be in a bikini I'm like okay so apparently they have a hologram of me where you can put me in your living room and I can be life-size or you can shrink me down and I think that's cool as fuck um super cool super super cool but anyway so yeah then they're like they want to do the VR thing which I think is interesting um you know never done that before and 
I'm told like the guy has to wear this the camera like on like yeah. bug calls and he's apparently like not even allowed to breathe like he can't make any noise whatsoever so <laughs> yeah I, I don't know how that is totally possible unless what are they gonna do put a gag ball in his mouth like I don't know I could think of a few things <laughs> yeah it, right right so yeah I have that. that that'll be coming up soon and yeah and then we'll see I just shot some more boy girl for my only fans I'm excited to put that all out and have some fun stuff coming up with Cherie Deville for my only fans oh and, yeah and she is fucking the bomb.com like so good I love her I love her she's just on my show and she's so awesome and I she's beautiful I love her she's so cool she is so cool yes I have worked with her once way back in the day when we did this film called Blacks on Blondes which I don't think that name would even go fly anymore but um yeah so (laughs) I think it's a great title I mean I'd buy it. <laughs> it is what it is, you know, it is what it is. But uh, you know, she was great back then. And then I was able to reconnect with her. And since coming back, like I've shot with girls now that I never had the opportunity to shoot with back in the day, which is nice. Like Nikki Benz, I never got to shoot with her my entire career. And we shot together and it was awesome. Like she is awesome. So much fun, super chill, super cool. Just do amazingly great so i'm hoping to do some more with some other big name og girls um yeah they're out there i do see a difference i see a difference in the performers and the og versus the new girls i see a difference it's very interesting when you say og because i ran into who is it i ran into heather hunter a couple of weeks ago okay yeah, I was just I was right around the corner from my apartment too. I took a photo with her. I actually have to find it and post it because it's the weirdest thing. She's like Jasmine. I'm like, huh? And I'm just like <laughs> leaving the hair salon. I'm like, holy shit, look who it is. It's Tether. But yeah, she's amazing. Girls were like so much fun back then. I think it was such a different, every era is different. You had all the glam, all the makeup, the box covers and the crazy parties, which were fun to go to, even though I didn't go to them, but I just heard about them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to some and yeah it, it was fun I mean I had a lot of fun I got I I had a lot of fun I really did and I don't regret one goddamn thing that I did Good. Like, yeah I really don't you know my family loves me they support me I told my fa- I had actually a conversation with my stepdad of all people prior to even, <laughs> I, mean, I know I know right not even my mom or my sisters it was my stepdad and because he has been more of a father to me than my biological father in my life and the relationship he has with my mother is so beautiful and I'm so thankful and grateful for this man to be in our family's lives but anyways I talked to him about it I'm like what do you think what do you because like I need to get my name back out there man like I just bought this house so I want I I want to get that shit paid for I want to pay it off and he was like well you know you've already done it all I was like yeah and he's like so then what's the difference I was like nothing he's like then go and do it I'm like okay and yeah so my family love me my nieces are the best they're like go auntie go go auntie (laughs) it's to have the support from your family is crucial like crucial because at the end of the day when we're all old and you know a lot of people deal with the stigma of porn and how society deems them etc cetera, etc cetera. but walking in your daily life you don't deal with society because you don't have a sticker on your forehead that says I'm a porn star so you only fuck with who you allow to fuck with in your life and if someone's going to treat you poorly you just can't bye and your family when you're old and you still have your family and they support you and they love you unconditionally it doesn't matter what society thinks it it doesn't matter because they don't walk in your shoes and if I wanted to be a politician okay yeah then it would matter but I would have made different choices in my 20s if I wanted to be a politician so mm -mm. I would still vote for you you crazy I'd want to be a pol. I want to be a politician I mean (laughs) I ran for I ran for local city council. I'm going to run for it again. I don't give a shit. I'm going to keep going. I will become a politician one day somewhere. Um, I'll be corrupt. I'll be cool. Um, 
I'll be fun and I'll be the only thing standing in the way of everyone getting hurt will be me. We need someone new for LA. Like seriously. Dude, I'd be perfect. I mean, oh. I know all the different areas. Get it, girl. Well. I work for other people's campaigns. So I'm very, I got very in, uh, engrossed in it during the pandemic. Um, just keep going and going and just, I was working. I could just, that's all I wanted to do was campaign, campaign. And it was fun. It's a great way to meet people. Um, you know, I met a guy. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, at least I knew like what side of the fence he was on. I didn't think he was on that fence. And we went on a first date. Then I almost knocked some guy out. It was like this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> like when you do go on a first date, make sure that you show your worst foot forward and the craziest you could be. Then he called me two days later. And then hey, it just I just a knife in my car. Did you leave a knife? And I'm like, of course, oh, that's where it is cool. Maybe from my, of course, I'm the person that drops a knife in your car or something crazy like that. Okay, yes. So yeah, but thank you so much for coming on today. I'm glad. I hope I get to meet you finally. I haven't spoke yeah. to you, by the way. He's one of the coolest people I've met in that business, even though I'm so far removed from it. But this has been like my way, kind of like dibbling, dabbling around it, but not in it completely. You've been connected. Yeah, no, he is. He's awesome. And he's one of the kindest, kindest people. And, you know, never no creepy line no no like he's no dirty jokes like there's some guys that are still really nice but they'll throw in dirty jokes and I'm not the kind of girl that you can dirty joke to I I do have a I feel like I'm such a catch-22 because like I have that side of me right but then the other side of me is very proper and that's how I conduct myself on a regular very proper and but then I have this the other side of me that is hmm, not proper at all. But um, it's the Pisces thing. It's the, the the two, you know, I went to this astrologer when I was like 21 and he did my whole chart. And this was the craziest shit because he didn't know anything about me. Mm -hmm. And he did my chart and he was like, your biggest issue is you have the hooker and the nun complex. And I was like, oh, <laughs> how did you know that? And he's like, because I see it right here. I see it. You have a very good, wholehearted side of you, but you have a very, very, very dark side to you as well. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> That's so crazy. So my friend was reading me the dark side of my horoscope like 13 years ago. Uh -huh. She said, I'll be the only senior in like Rio or the Mediterranean with a hot 20 year old boyfriend. Hmm. well I don't know I, I just I don't see that are you are, listen you never know that's the thing <laughs> you never know yes we are and, and it's, a, it's, it's something that you would even want like I'm huge into manifesting yeah huge huge, <laughs> huge 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 I mean I have manifested so much of my shit that it's not even funny like when, when I read back through my journal and I'm like Oh my God. Like I wrote this. Down. It does. It happens, you know, and it's like the difference between us manifesting something and other, most other people that do it is we actually go out there and do the work for it. You don't just write it down and no. hope, 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 you no, know, you think about it every single right. day and you make small baby steps that lead towards that goal. That's the whole point of manifesting. It's not just to say, I wish this to come true and pretend you're going to rub a fucking magic genie and it's going to poof happen. No, it, it plants the seed and then you water that seed every single day in small little increments until you, you get it and it comes to you like it's yeah I'm yeah, yeah. well yeah no this woman was in one of those uber pools when uber pool was a thing this is really quick and I was a passenger she was the other passenger and she just kept talking she wouldn't shut her freaking trap okay I'm like sitting there kind of like with a hangover I'm like okay oh no so I, I turned around of course in jasmine fashion yeah well i manifested this pregnancy blah blah blah. i said you didn't manifest it you spread your legs and got fucked i just turned around the driver was like oh shit what'd you say i said i just said you spread your legs and you got fucked it's a typical birds and bees stuff i'm like i can't deal with this she like she shut up after that like she got the hint that okay they don't want to talk about manifest stations and pregnancy and I, I want to go home yeah right well that, that that's a more of a science science related thing anyways you know like yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah yeah 
I mean, you can manifest the man of your dreams. Sure, you could write down what you want in a partner, but you can't manifest that the egg is going to be fertilized. And I mean, that's science. But who knows? Sure. But I mean, everyone thinks differently. I, we we're all so different, and yeah. whatever, like whatever. <laughs> and seen. <laughs> Thanks so much. I love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. No, this is good. So, I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful Saturday. I hope you're enjoying the ride on Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair podcast. So if you are, do me a huge, huge favor. Woo! Please go ahead. Go on to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, but Apple's great. Give me a nice rating and review. Send me a screenshot and I promise you I will send you a special goodie bag. So please rate and review Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair podcast. And in exchange for that, once I see the DM with the review and your name and address, I will get those gift bags out to you. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. (laughs) 